In the last tutorial, we left it with the high score table showing names and scores, but it was showing them as lists. So in this tutorial, we're going to show how to display them in a nicer way. We're going to use a pen font engine. I've shown how to make this in a separate tutorial. So if you've already done that tutorial, you can use one you've made. Otherwise, have a look for the link to my finished project in the YouTube description and you can use the finished font engine. If not, the full text font engine is in my Rock Coder Tutorials profile on Scratch. There's a link for it in the YouTube description so you can load it straight up from there. So I'm going to load that page up and here it is, the pen font engine. If we look inside, I can open my backpack and drag the text sprite into the backpack. Now I can close that page down and back in the previous page I open the backpack, the text sprite is there and I can just drag it into my project. So now we have a way of displaying the high score table in a nicer manner. So let's go back to the high scores. Just make this small for a moment. Now we have a show high score broadcast receiver there. So this would seem a great place to display the high scores. So we're not going to show the lists anymore. That's, that was never going to be a, a really good way to do it. What we're going to do in here, the font engine uses the pen. And so the first thing we'll do is erase all to make sure there's nothing in the background. And then we need to set the positions at which we're going to display the text. Now I'm going to set the variables. These variables, you'll, you'll understand what these are if you've done the other tutorial. If not, let's have a quick look in the text sprite. And there's a set of variables we have to set here. Um, the coordinates, the top and left coordinates, the scale of the font, whether it's got a shadow or not. We set all those variables and then we call the function in here, the broadcast in here and it will display it to screen. So let's start setting variables. I'll have to set the coordinates. So we'll have a couple of sets there. I'm going to have the shadow on and I'm going to tell it what to print. So that's four variables. First one, text.left. The next one, text.top. The next one, text.shadow. And the last one, text.string, and I'll fill those in. Text.left is the x-coordinate. I'm going to put that at minus 80. Top, I'm going to put as 170, which is fairly near the top of the screen. Shadow, I want a nice shadow on my font, just to make it look a bit better. And the text string, I'm just going to display the word high scores. So if I run the code now, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Oh, no, it won't do anything. I also need to do the broadcast. Broadcast and wait, display text. And I also need to initialize the text engine, which I'll do in the game sprite, where the green flag is pressed. We will broadcast, initialize. And that sets up the pen engine. So if I run this code now, display high scores on the screen. It's displaying it in white with a black shadow, which may not be the best for this game. Um, so just for now, I'll pop onto backgrounds, look at the backdrop, change it to a bitmap, and just flood fill it. There we go. And now back to the high score sprite. So I've displayed high scores. Now I need to actually display the information. So we want to display all the information. So we're going to loop through it using an index variable. We'll set the index to one. We will make the, the, the text a little bit smaller than the title. So we'll set text.scale to 80 and set the position so the top of it is going to be let's see at about 
I'd say 130. So it's underneath the high scores. And now we'll start looping. The number of times you want to loop is the variable we've already set, which is called high score number. So we're going to go through each one. We're going to, first of all, display the number, whether it's number one, two, three, four, five, where it is in the high score table. And we're going to do this on the left side of the screen. So set text.left to, I don't know, maybe minus 140. Yeah, no, minus 180, I think. I'm going to make that a little bit lower down as well. And so it's going to do this at the left hand side. I just want to set the text string to print the number of where it is in the high score table. So text dot string. I have a join in there because I want a full stop after the number. So it's simply index joined with full stop and then a broadcast to so display it event. Broadcast and wait, display text. And then underneath that, I'm going to move, well, it's going to be very similar to this code. So I'll just duplicate this code. Uh, same, same vertical position. So I'll leave that. I'll just set the X position to minus 140. And at this point, I'm going to display the name from the high score table. So that's in the list. Hi, item index. So let's start with the first entry in the list of high score names and display that. And then I want to display the score. So that's I'll do that on the right hand side of the screen at the same vertical place. Display high scores. So that's displaying all the information. Now I want to move down so it's ready to print the next line. So I'm going to change text up top by I think 26 pixels sounds about right. And obviously I'll have to change the index as well. So it's pointing at the next entry in the high score table. So that should show high scores. And while I'm changing this, Hide high scores doesn't need to hide the list anymore. All that needs to do is clear the screen. So let's have a look at what happens when I run this. There we go. Prints all the entries. If I press spacebar and have a game of this wonderful game, Rock Code scores 500 points, and there I am at the top of the list. That's really nice. The only thing I'd like to do to improve it is. If you notice, it's actually quite slow at displaying it at the moment. Scratch Cat scores 200. It's not instant. It's quite a nice effect. You, you might want that like that in your game, but I want it to appear instantly. Now, the reason it's not appearing instantly is because there's a loop here. So what I would normally do is put this into a custom block, non-refresh, but I can't because I've got broadcast and wait commands in there and they don't work in a non-refresh block. So what I would advise to do in this case is move this code out of here and actually into the text sprite. So I've copied it across, I'll delete it from there and have a look in the text sprite and there it is. But if I run the code now, I'll see a problem. Nothing is getting displayed. And there's a, a few reasons for that. First is high score number is local. It's a for this sprite only variable in high scores, which doesn't exist in text. Now there's a nice use of the sensing block here. It's, where is it? It's this one. It just says backdrop of stage. But I can change stage to high scores and I can change this to high score number. And that allows me to look at a variable in a different sprite. I can't change it, but I can look at it and that's all I need. So I'll take high score number out and I'll put that in. So that's a little bit better. It now does the numbers down the side. But 
it's not doing the names or scores because they're in this sprite only lists again in high scores and there's no equivalent to this sensing block for lists all i can do is make those lists for all sprites and there's no nice way of doing this there's no quick method unfortunately so i'll show you a trick i use for this sort of thing i'm going to make a list i'm going to call it high scores notice i'm doing it for all sprites so i've got capital h it's very handy to be able to do this i can tell just by looking that the previous one starting with a little h was for this sprite only again i'm going to make a high score names for all sprites and now i'm going to have to go through every single occurrence of the previous high scores and high score names and change them but my little trick for this is i'll rename them so instead of just high score names I'm going to add a lot of dashes afterwards. Um, also for the previous high scores, I'm going to do exactly the same. It's going to be high scores and a lot of dashes. And the reason for doing this is it makes it so much easier to spot where those variables are in your program. Look at this. So now I can just change that to high scores and high score names. Similarly, high score names and high scores. I'll look down here and I have to do it for all of these so could have been planned better but it's it's not too difficult a little bit time consuming but not too difficult high score names high scores it's probably most of them yep just a couple more high scores and high score names and over here I'm going to need to do high score names and high scores. And I think that is all of them. So let's just give that a go. I'll just hide the list from the screen, make it bigger, and let's give it a go, see what it does. And there we go. Now it's working. Just as it did before, it's no faster, but it's working again. So I can delete the old for this sprite only high score names and the old for this right only high scores and have a look at this text now because i'm actually calling display text all that does is call this custom block and now that my code is in the text sprite i can just call that custom block directly so i don't need the wait there so i will call it there call it there so everywhere it was doing a broadcast i'm just calling the custom block directly and I will delete the previous broadcasts like that. And now, because I've got no broadcasts on wait, I can do what I want to do before, which is make a custom block for show high scores, run without refresh. And that's what I'll put that code in, and I shall call it from the receiver. Let's have a look at that full screen. And it's now displaying it instantly. Rock Coder scores a great 500 points. Boom, it's right there. But it wasn't, it was still a slight pause. I think I've missed one. Yep, there it is. It is a left of broadcast display and wait in there. So again, that should be display text. And now, and now it should. Innocent. There we go. Press space to play. Rock coder scores 500 straight away. Uh, Scratch cat comes back in with a massive score of 850. Well, rock coder's not finished yet. Rock coder comes back with a score of 920. So you can see the high score table's working. You can use this in any of your games. In the next tutorial, we're going to show you how to store these scores in the cloud so that they're persistent so that they exist if you quit the game and come back to it the next day the high scores will still be there for anybody who's played it so that's in the next tutorial if you've enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to the rock coder youtube channel so that you'll be notified when the next tutorial is available until then enjoy coding